I think that there are something like, let's to simplify it, three competing narratives about the causes of this global recession. The first narrative see, sees the global financial crisis as solely, and I say solely, a failure in government regulation. That's one of the first narratives that floats around. The second one is one that expands on that narrative and sees the global financial crisis as a failure of the neoliberal economic framework itself. And what do I mean by that? I mean by that the belief uh, or the idea that government sh uh, should shrink dramatically uh, and that markets are completely self-regulating. That's what I, in simple terms, believe, by the defi believe the definition of neoliberal economic framework is. And of course, the third narrative that floats around concerns the role of consumerism and individual behaviour. Now, I'm not going to go into the first one at any length. I believe that, uh, that this event is much greater than just the failure of regulation. I do believe it goes to the second narrative that I was talking about before, that at, at its heart, at the heart of the global financial crisis, is a failure of free market fundamentalism. And what do I, why do I believe that? Well, I believe that because fundamentalism has its followers in the first instance simply because it is simple. And simplicity can be quite attractive. And of course, I've brought my economist along today and to recommend a, um, a very interesting article on this question, just to save time. Now, I know this will become the barbecue stopper at houses around the country over Christmas. <laughs> it's certainly worth the read. But the point here is that, uh, that at the core of neoliberalism is some very simplistic ideas. And of course, when you're making government policy, making government economic policy is much more complex and putting in place regulation is much more complex. Saying that you should remove it all is very simple. So it can be very, very appealing. And of course, it is much more complex uh, to argue, as this government has done, that sometimes government debt is necessary, as it is, as it is indeed now, or at other times, that it's our responsibility to pay it down, which of course we must do when the crisis is over. And of course it's always much more simplistic or simple for the coalition to point to uh, better growth projections for Australia to claim the crisis is over and advocate the rollback of stimulus simply because it's simple. It's much harder for a government to tell a complex story where we should, where, about us expecting that unemployment, despite the, the uh, impact of stimulus, will continue to rise over time because employment or unemployment is a lagging indicator, which on average is 12 to 13 months after growth turns positive. That's much more complex, much more difficult, but also much more, uh, much more correct. So the convenience of such fundamentalism is a cop-out, in my view, from taking up the harder task of governing pragmatically for the long term, a task which involves also justifying hard decisions. And of course, the other thing that the government has done to back in uh, what we have done with our stimulus, our temporary, timely, targeted stimulus, is that uh, we have taken up with great gusto the challenge of talking to the Australian people about it. And of course we've had uh, the two recent essays uh, from the Prime Minister, which I do believe correctly outline the nature of the challenges before us. And I know it's become fashionable in some quarters to, to, to uh, uh, ridicule the essays. I think they've been absolutely critical in explaining to the Australian people what has been happening, where the government is going. And we have essentially done that from day one, and particularly from the time of the collapse of Lehman Brothers. And of course the third area is in this area of consumerism which is and the behaviour of, uh, of people in this environment. And I think I'm getting a look from Tim that I should wind up. Uh, but uh, someone I studied at uh, univers university, Etzioni, uh, has written I think a very informative article recently about what he sees as a deeper social disease in consumerism. 
and that deeper social disease is something which has fuelled uh, levels of debt and indebtedness and so on. Now, consumerism, uh, he says in that article, is not the same thing as capitalism, and it's certainly not the same thing as consumption. But he does point to uh, the impact of what he calls consumerism in fueling events such as we've seen in recent times. And reading that article got me thinking about responses here in this country. And I don't think we've seen in this country, in the middle of this event, the sort of selfish behaviour Etzioni is talking about in that article. What I think we've actually seen in this country is great concern for the welfare of others. We've seen this particularly at the workforce level. I've never seen in the time that I've been involved in public life in this country the sort of response that we've had on the ground uh, in businesses where employers have gone out of their way to keep labour on, where employees have gone out of their way to protect the jobs of fellow workers. We have seen an unprecedented degree of cooperation on the ground not just in workplaces, but in communities, because people do really understand that we're all in this together. And the lesson I draw, I draw from that is that we had feared for many years that the great sense of community we'd always idealised in the concept of the fair go may have been slipping away and, and, and have been lost during the Howard years. I think what this has demonstrated is that it has not, and that Australians do have the capacity to come together and I think that's a very, very important lesson from all of this. So there's a few remarks on, uh, on the beer and a few remarks on the wine. Thanks very much. <laughs>